Hey, what's up? It's Triggy, and I want to be able to control this motor, ideally with a microcontroller like an Arduino. The trouble is, this can only output 5 volts and a couple milliamps. This motor requires 20 volts and 100 times more current. So how are we going to do it? We want to power our device, in this case a motor, with a sufficiently powerful battery. If we hook up the positive and negative terminals, the motor becomes active. Great! We can add more precise control with a switch, so that when the switch is activated, the motor activates as well. But this isn't super helpful since we don't want to be pushing on a switch, we want to be able to control the motor with 5 volts. The solution here is going to be a device called a transistor, which can act as an electronic switch. It has three terminals, and when the gate terminal, labeled G, receives a 5 volt input, the transistor allows current to flow across the other two terminals. If the gate receives a 0 volt input, no current can flow, just like a switch. Let's put together a circuit. We'll start with the transistor and then connect the battery to the board. Then we'll connect the motor between the 20 volt and the drain terminal of the transistor. We'll tie the gate to ground so that the transistor is off by default. And then we'll tie the source to ground as well. And that's it. Then we'll just add a signal wire to the gate. If I manually connect the signal wire to 5 volts, the motor activates. Now we can write a simple script to control the device with a digital output pin. Oh, also a quick tangent, typically you want more control than just on and off for a motor. The device I'm actually interested in controlling is this solenoid valve, but it doesn't move and just makes a quiet click, so a motor is better for demonstration. Okay, so the circuit we made worked, but it was messy and not very professional. Wouldn't it be nice if we could get the same circuit printed onto a microchip? We can go to a site like EasyEDA for that. We'll start by drawing up the wiring schematic. We can search the libraries for pre-made parts. First I'll grab and place this Raspberry Pi, which I'll be using instead of an Arduino. Now I'll look for a resistor, this one looks good, and it's through a hole as opposed to surface mount, which is what we want. Then I'll grab some terminal blocks so we can connect the battery and output devices. And finally, we'll grab the transistor. Now we can wire it together. We'll ground the Raspberry Pi and connect one of its output pins to the gate of the transistor. I'll add two terminal blocks so I can maybe add a voltage converter so that the Raspberry Pi can also be powered by the battery, but feel free to ignore that. Great, now we can convert our schematic to a PCB. I'm just going to place these components where I think they might fit nicely. It would be cool to be able to control more than one output device, so I'm just going to copy and paste that part of the circuit a few times and connect them to other digital output pins. Okay, now see how some terminals are connected to each other with these light blue guiding lines? We can make those connections concrete by drawing copper traces. We can use different trace thicknesses depending on how much current the trace will carry. For example, the signal wires will carry very little current and therefore the traces can be quite thin. We can also draw traces on the back side of the printed circuit board so traces don't cross over each other, and continue to adjust the design. We can check exactly how thick to make the traces with an online calculator. Since I know I'm going to be powering a solenoid, I'm going to add some diodes to prevent back EMF. If that doesn't apply to you, feel free to ignore these. And now we can go ahead and order these PCBs to be delivered. After not too long, the PCBs arrived and they look great. I have all the components that we'll need right here. Resistors, terminal blocks, diodes, transistors, and header pins, which fit right onto the Raspberry Pi. 
We'll start by soldering on the terminal blocks. Then we'll go ahead and add the header pins. And now the transistors. After also soldering the resistors and diodes, the shield is complete and fits right on top of our Raspberry Pi. I'll go ahead and connect my DC voltage converter. Then the battery. And finally the output. Now when I hook up the battery, the Raspberry turns on, as it's powered by the shield directly. Remember the solenoid valve I was talking about earlier? It's now hooked up to a pneumatic cylinder, so when I activate the valve manually, we see the cylinder activates. Now let's watch what happens when we run an automated script using our new Raspberry Pi shield. The script should turn the transistor on and off in one second intervals. Let's see what happens. And it works just like we hoped. Alright, that's all for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.